Hi everyone, welcome back. In this lecture we're going to look at linear approximation and differentials. We begin with this quote. It is the mark of an instructed mind to rest satisfied with the degree of precision to which the nature of the subject admits and not to seek exactness when only an approximation of the truth is possible. Now through our experience with mathematics to date, we may come away with the impression that we're only interested in exact quantities, in exact answers. But can we always obtain exact answers? Is there a need possibly for being content with just coming up with approximate answers? Getting approximate solutions to problems? Turns out there is. Oftentimes, we may not be able to get an exact answer and we have to be satisfied with an approximation. Or other times, an approximation may just be easier to get. And that may be all we are interested in. So how do we begin this process of finding techniques for approximation? Well, we're going to start with one, and this is linear approximation. So here's our motivating problem. If f of 1 is 4, and we know f prime of 1 is 1. Can we say anything about f of 2? Can we approximate f of 2? Knowing only information about f at a single point, can we say anything about a nearby point, the value at a nearby point? So here's what we've got. We have at 1, the value of the function f is 4. And that's all we know about the values of f. We just know the value at 1. We don't know any other values. But we'd like to try to figure out if we can approximate it, what f of 2 is. So here's 2. I'd like to know what value the function takes on on this line. Where does the function cross this line? I'd like to know that. The only bit of information we have, in addition to the function value, is what its derivative is. So I'm going to just indicate that in this diagram by, well, the function, as it passes through the point 1, 4, the function is heading in the direction of its derivative. So it's going that way. I like to think about this in the following way. Suppose a police officer is chasing a suspect through a cornfield. So the stocks are really high, and so the officer can't see the person that they're chasing. And they're running through the cornfield, and all of a sudden the officer comes across a farmer in the middle of the field. And the farmer says, the suspect went that way. Which way does the police officer go? I guess they'll go in the direction that the farmer pointed them in. That's the way the suspect is going. That's probably the way the police officer should be going. At least for the first you know, five or ten steps. Then after that, you don't know which way the sus suspect went. But at least for the first five or ten steps, the officer is pretty much guaranteed to be going in the direction the suspect was going. And that's the idea here. At this point, 1, 4, we know the function is heading in the direction of the derivative, direction of the tangent line. So really, there's a tangent line sitting under here. So there's the tangent line. The tangent line to f at x equals 1. There's our tangent line. In fact, we know what the equation of this is because we have all the information we need y is equal to the y value of the point we know plus the derivative, which is 1, times x minus the x-coordinate of the point we know, which is 1. And so this is then x plus 3. So we know the equation of this tangent line. What's the function value near 2? Well, a pretty good guess is that maybe it should be the value of the point on the tangent line. It's analogous to this idea of the officer chasing the suspect. Suspect went that away. For the first five or ten steps, the police officer is, is pretty much guaranteed to be going in the direction that the suspect was going. After that, who knows, the suspect could have veered off in, in any direction. But for the first few steps, the officer is probably going in the direction the suspect was going in, most definitely. And so that's the idea here. If I want to know what the function value is at 2, I just follow along the tangent line. And this should be a pretty good estimate of what f of 2 is. So perhaps we should use this value to approximate f of 2. 
And that's our idea. That's the big idea here. The big idea is that what is f of 2? Well, it should be approximately the value we get on the tangent line, which in this case would be 2 plus 3, because there's the equation of the tangent line. So that's 5. So that's our big idea. We we'll want to find the approximate value of f of 2, perhaps use information about the tangent line, since that's really all we have is information about the function in terms of what its tangent line is there. So let's summarize what we've got so far. Instead of evaluating f at x, we evaluate l of x, where l is the tangent line to the graph of y equals f of x at a known point that's close to the point we're interested in, in approximating. Let's sketch this again and put all this information into the diagram. So here's a function. This is our y equals f of x. We know information about a point A. That's f of A. We want to find information about a point near A, say, say at this x value. So we'd like to know what the function value is there or at least approximate it. What we know at A is the function value, but we also know the derivative. We're assuming that we know the derivative there. So we can find the tangent line. And the equation of the tangent line is y is equal to y coordinate of the point we know, f of A, plus f prime of A times x minus A. So we've got this function, this linear function, which describes the tangent line. We're going to give this function a name. It's going to be important for us to talk about this function and, and use it. So we're going to give it a name. I'm going to call it L of x, capital L, just because this is a linear function. So I just want to represent that. In fact, we're going to call this the linearization. And we'll do that in a second. But I just wanted to give it a name. Now, what's the function value at x? Well, we have a corresponding point on the tangent line. And the big idea here is that these two things should be close. These two points, the point on the tangent line and the point on the curve, should be close. The tangent line is supposed to be a good approximation of the curve near A. So if x is close to A, then these two points should be close. So these are close if A and x are close. And so what this means is that f of x, the function value, should be really close to the corresponding point on the tangent line, which is l of x. And that's if x is close to a. So that's our idea. Approximate the value of the point on the function by using the point on the tangent line when x is close to a, where a is where we constructed the tangent line. So I just want to give a bit of terminology to these things we've introduced. The function the, that describes the tangent line, we're going to call that the linearization of f at a. So we're just giving a name to the function that gives the tangent line now. So there's nothing new here except for the fact that we're giving it a name now. The tangent line is given, being, the function describing the tangent line is being given a name called the linearization. For x close to a, the function values are close to the values on the tangent line, close to the linearization. And when we use the points on the tangent line to approximate the points on the function, this is called linear approximation, because we're using a linear object to approximate what potentially could be a curvy object. So this is called linear approximation, using the tangent line to approximate the function. Let's revisit the previous example now, or the motivating problem. If f of 1 is 4 and f prime of 1 is 1, we're going to use linear approximation at x equals 1 to approximate f of 2. So we've essentially already done this above. I just want to now recast it in terms of our new terminology. So the first thing we do is we work out the linearization, or the equation of the tangent line, at x equals 1. That's where we've got all this information at. So the linearization is f of 1 plus f prime of 1 times x minus 1, which is 4 plus x minus 1, or in other words, x plus 3. Now we've got the linearization. We can now do linear approximation. 
using the linear function to approximate the function f. So the linear approximation says that f of 2 is approximately l of 2. And l of 2 is just 2 plus 3, which is 5. Okay. So that's the idea with linear approximation. Use the tangent line to approximate the function for points near the place where you took the tangent line at. Let's have a look at this example. We want to use linear approximation to approximate the square root of 37. Square root of 37, well, we can get a rough approximation. We can do this without using any calculus whatsoever. What's a rough approximation? Well, 37 is close to 36. So the square root of 37 should be close to the square root of 36, which we know is 6. That's a perfect square that's near 37. So square root of 37 is roughly 6. So there's our rough approximation. Well, the thing here is, is that we know a little bit more. We know that 37 is actually a little bit bigger than 36. Well, it's one unit bigger. So the square root of 37 should be bigger than 6. How much bigger? How much bigger is the square root of 37 than 6? Is it 6.1? Is it 6.2, 6.5, 6.01, 6.001? How much bigger is the square root of 37 than 36? That's where we're going to use a bit of calculus to figure out roughly how much bigger it is. So this rough approximation was just finding a nearest perfect square to 37. And now we're going to use calculus and linear approximation to start to refine this approximation. So here's where linear approximation can come in linear approximation. So there's got to be an underlying function we're trying to approximate. Well, that underlying function is the square root function because we want to know the function value at 37 approximately. If we're going to do linear approximation, we also need to know its derivative. because We're going to need to work out the equation of the tangent line, so that's 1 over 2 root x. We are going to use the linearization at x equals the values that we can work out, namely when x is 36, we know f of 36 and f prime of 36, that's the perfect square. So we're going to use information at 36 to, to get information about approximately what the square root of 37 is. So we have that f of 37 is approximately, well maybe I'll, I'll do this a little bit more general first, f of x is approximately L of x, where L of x is the linearization at 36. So it's the equation of the tangent line at 36, or, or the, the function describing the tangent line at 36. So that's f of 36 plus f prime at 36 times x minus 36. And this approximation, f is approximately L of x, for x near 36 for x near 36. So in particular, at 37, we have that f of 37 is approximately f at 36 plus f prime at 36 times 37 minus 36. And this is, well, f of 36 is 6. f prime of 36, f prime is 1 over 2 root x, so this is 1 over 2 times the square root of 36, 2 times 6, or, or 1 twelfth, times 37 minus 36, so that's just 1. And so there's our approximation. f of 37 is approximately 6 plus 1 twelfth. Here's the cool part. Our first rough approximation told us that the value was roughly 6. We wanted to know how much bigger. We've now found that. Roughly how much bigger than 6 is the square root of 37? It's roughly 1 twelfth bigger. Notice that this rough approximation that we worked out, that was this value, using the function value at 36. But then we refined it using linear approximation to figure out what is a bit of an adjustment factor. 
We know that 37 is bigger than 36, so f of 37 is slightly bigger than 6. How much bigger? That's where we use the derivative to figure how much bigger it was. How much bigger it was. So there's our approximation. It's 6 plus 1 twelfth. How good is this approximation? What's the accuracy of this approximation? Accuracy. What is this accuracy? Well, we've just found that f of 37 is approximately 6 plus 1 twelfth, which is roughly, in terms of a decimal, 6.0833. And of course, the threes are going to repeat here. If we work out using a calculator what the square root of 37 is to get a decimal approximation, remember calculators are also doing approximations, so that's going to be another approximation. We, we just expect that the calculator's approximation is probably going to be better than the one we came up with. Um, and so what this gives us is 6.0827, and then there's some more decimal places there. And how good? did we do with our linear approximation? Well, look at this. We got 6.08. Calculator returned 6.08. We just seem to be off in the third decimal place. Pretty good. We did pretty good for starting with an initial guess of 6 and then refining it using linear approximation to get this adjustment factor of 1 12. We did a pretty good job of getting two decimal places. So our accuracy, which would then be the difference of these two, so this would be the square root of 37 minus our approximation, L of 37. The accuracy in this case is about 0 0.00057. So that's about the difference between the actual value and our linear approximation. Pretty good. We got about two decimal places. Now I mentioned that a calculator uses approximation techniques as well. Of course, because it's going to return a decimal expansion to only 9 or 10 decimal places, uh, depending on what calculator you're using or what computer you're using. So it does an approximation. How are its approximation methods different than the one we just used here? Well, the idea lies in the following. We started with 6 as an approximation, roughly. Then we used the derivative to refine that approximation. We used a linear approximation. We only used information about the first derivative of the square root function. What your calculator does is it uses information involving higher derivatives, second derivative, third derivative, fourth derivative, to make this refinement. And those are higher approximation techniques. And that's something we all actually get to in Calculus 2, Math 152, in Integral Calculus. We'll get to those higher uh, approximation techniques. And those will give us an indication of what the methods are that calculators are using to make approximations. But in some sense, we're doing the first step of that. We're using the first derivative information to refine our approximate value. Now, I think it's important to be able to look at this in terms of an underlying picture. So let's just sketch this example's picture. So here's the function we're interested in. y equals the square root of x. We have information about x being 36. We know that that function value there is 6. We want to know information of the function at 37. We'd like to know what is f of 37, roughly. We use the tangent line at 36. So we use the tangent line there. Found the value on the tangent line, the value of the, the linearization at 37, that was L of 37, which was 6 plus 1 twelfth. And we said, well, that should be really close to the value on the function. These two should be close together. So F of 37 should be really close to 6 plus 1 twelfth. That's what we've done above. What we actually get from this diagram is something a little bit more. From this diagram, we get that our approximation is, while well, we use the red point to approximate the blue point, is larger than the actual value. So we get that from the diagram. 
we get that our 6 plus 1 twelfth is actually a little bit larger. It's an approximation to the square root of 37, and we know from the diagram that's actually a little bit larger. That's pretty cool, too, that we can say our approximation is slightly bigger than the, than the actual value of the square root of 37. Okay, in anticipation of the, the next discussion that we're going to have on differentials, I just want to focus a little bit more on this diagram. And let's just see, what was that 1 twelfth that came up? Well, that was, we are sitting here at the value of 36 was 6. If we move over one unit to 37, how far do I have to move up to get back onto my function? In other words, how much bigger is the square root of 37 than the square root of 36? Well, if I go all the way up to the tangent line, that distance I had to move up is just the derivative. This distance here is, so that distance there, is 1 twelfth, which is f prime at 36. So if we started at 36 comma 6, moved over one unit to x equals 37, how much do we have to move up to get onto the function? Well, we had to move up roughly 1 twelfth to get on the tangent, or exactly 1 twelfth to get on the tangent line, so roughly 1 twelfth to get onto the function. That's what we're using here. This is, this 1 twelfth is how much we had to go up to get back onto the tangent line, and we're using that as an estimate for how much we had to go up to get onto the function itself. And this quantity, uh, how much we have to go up to get back onto the tangent line, and using it to approximate how much we have to go up to get onto the curve, is an important quantity, and that's what we're going to focus on next. That's actually what we're going to call the differential. And so that's what we're going to talk about now.